Good morning, dear. So, welcome to my lecture on robotics. So, this is actually a go. Um, this is, as you know, lockdown or unlock. I don't know, but uh, some situation which is awkward is going on, and we are taking the help of this crude technology. With hope that very soon some superior technology will come, will be procured by the institute. But till then, I will not allow either you or me to suffer. So that's why uh, I full heartedly welcome you to my course on robotics. Two kinds of students are here. Uh, for one, the name of the course is Mathematical Foundation of Robotics and they are the dual degree students. And uh, for um, seven semester students, the name of the course is actually uh, Robotics and Industrial Automation. Since substantial portion is um, common, so I have decided uh, that the lectures will be conducted together as far as possible and afterwards it will be bifurcated when industrial automation part will come. Uh, so today uh, actually I would like to tell you um, about the protocol, means we will be having uh, video lectures or online lectures as and when um, we get the technology and then of course we can do it uh, my students are actually trying we can do it arrange it on zoom uh, with a recording facility because uh, number of students are not many uh, so we'll also try that uh, so the as you see name of the course is um, robotics and the protocol is we'll be having lectures and uh, regular assignments will be given to you because that's the doing the assignments you can learn many things which will be um, necessary uh, for growing your confidence in the course. <coughs> so I am also referring some good book, very good book, which uh, I will follow. Uh, some of you even buy uh, nowadays books are very uh, cheap in India because they are having paperback edition. Uh, but I am not sure about this book whether it has paperback edition or not. Anyway, but this and this they have a paperback edition. Uh, so this is a wonderful book, Introduction to Robotics by John J. Craig. Uh, you can make it as a, um, as a textbook. And this is a wonderful book also, a recent book written, Robotics, Vision and Control by Peter Pokey. Um, and then uh, Robotics, Control, Sensing, Vision and Intelligence by Case 2, R.C. Gonzalez and C.H.G. Lee. Uh, <clears throat> having said that, uh, let us try to understand that um, uh, what is uh, a robot and why somebody need to uh, study this uh, subject robotics. Uh, what is a robot? If somebody asks you, then the answer would be um, Robot is a reprogrammable universal machine um, having at least five degrees of freedom. So, a lot of jargon term here I have used. Robot is an universal reprogrammable machine. That means a robot is a machine but of universal type. That means it can do various types of technical jobs. One robot is not dedicated, unlike a dedicated machine. One robot is not dedicated for a particular job. Okay? Uh, it can do various types of, uh, one robot should be able to do various types of jobs. That's why it's called universal machine. And the basic difference between conventional machine and robot is that it should be reprogrammable. Means, by uh, software program, you can change the course of action of the robot. And that makes a uh, lot of uh, complication in system design and integration and that also uh, making robot different from uh, other machines. Other machines are not reprogrammable. Okay. Uh, however, uh, having said that there are some machines like uh, originally uh, CNC machine that is numerically controlled um, machine. Uh, uh, computerized numerical control machine in CCNC. Those are again programmable. 
but the difference between cnc machine and a robot is that robot must have larger degrees of freedom that's why uh, it should have uh, uh, it is specified that it should have five or more degrees of freedom so what is degrees of freedom one need to know degrees of freedom basically is um, mathematically let us uh, define this uh, the degrees of freedom of a system is uh, equal to the number of independent coordinates necessary for completely specifying that system say for example i have a 3d object duster right uh, it can clean the mold when it is floating in the uh, 3d environment how many uh, coordinates are necessary to completely describe uh, this 3d object it is 6 why 6 3 for completely describing the position say center of mass of this uh, raster you need 3 coordinate and of course when i am uh, defining the of freedom i am talking about a orthogonal cartesian coordinate frame like this Okay, and this orthogonal right handed Cartesian coordinate frame that means x, y, z. If I see from here, if it is counterclockwise, then this is positive direction, if clockwise, then this is negative direction. So, this is a coordinate frame on convention we use. Don't worry about that, we will talk many more about those things. But what I am trying to make your point here is if the uh, 3D object is here, like the duster. Then it has a center of mass. Okay, and I can I can completely specify it by three independent coordinate x, y, z. Okay to represent the central mass of the object. But since this is not a point, this is a 3D object, having on the same um, position, it can have different orientation. It could be like this, it could be like this, it could be like this. So, you could not completely explain or uh, describe the object by a three coordinate frame. You need additional three uh, additional three uh, parameters x, y, z, z is not enough additional three parameters are required to completely describe the uh, 3D object in space what are those parameters? they, they are of this how, um, how much angle it has made with x-axis how much angle it has made with y-axis and how much it has made with z-axis so these are additional um, parameters is required so completely so this is the freedom is actually 6 because x y z and let us call them alpha beta gamma these are the 6 parameters if I specify them then the object uh, description is unique ok that's why it has 6 degrees of freedom so alpha is angle with x-axis, beta is angle with uh, y-axis, and gamma say is angle with z-axis. So this is called position of the object, and this is called orientation. So this is unique for the uh, rigid body that it has position as well as orientation say in the recursion coordinate frame uh, point has only uh, position it doesn't have any orientation so the point has three degrees of freedom in xyz uh, coordinate frame which was very much con conversion rate but the moment I am talking with a 3D uh, object it has six degrees of freedom now coming back to robot so robot is 
uh, having six degrees of freedom, but robot is not one rigid body. So again, some definition, complete definition I can give, robot is an open kinematic chain. So again I draw one term. Say I am drawing some line diagram or simplified diagram of a robot. Okay. So in 2D this uh, figure I have drawn each uh, these are called joint. It could be operated by motor and the uh, robot will move. And this is a rigid body, completely rigid body. This is a each link, these are called link and these are called joints. Links are connected by joints and these links are completely rigid body. Okay. But this robot has one, two, three, four, four degrees of freedom because it has four uh, joints. Okay. So if I make more uh, joints here, it will have more degrees of freedom. Wait a minute. I would prefer that they should not be called as degrees of freedom because you see in 2D, two dimensional uh, uh, um, plane, how many degrees of freedom an object can have? An object can have only three degrees of freedom. What are those? Say it can move in the direction. Say if I call it x, so it can move in x direction. Okay. It can so it can move in x direction. Say if I call it x, it can move in y direction and it can rotate about z direction. Right? Z is actually. Uh, perpendicular to the plane of the board. So that's the three degrees of freedom it can have provided it is constrained to be on the board, on this plane. But it, I see it has one, two, three, four. <coughs> Sorry. So I see there are five joints. So does it have five degrees of freedom? The answer is no. It still has Three degrees of freedom and additional degrees of freedom I would call, prefer to call them as degrees of mobility because it can be proved that the position and orientation by the way, this is called end effector or ripper. Position and orientation of the ripper <coughs> can be expressed still using three uh, parameters only. And all other, all other two parameters will be a combination of, can be expressed in terms of these three independent parameters. So that's the uh, idea. It is increasing the mobility. For example, my hand is here. Agar, uh, the, the, God could have uh, made another structure where there is another joint. It will have extra mobility means Without manipulating all the joints, if I want to move here, I cannot, right? I will have to manipulate so many joints. But if I could have another joint here, I could only uh, move that joint and my end effector could reach uh, in some place where otherwise it was not possible. Okay. So, uh, having more uh, joints, more than necessary, uh, give you some advantage with complexity of course but it should be clearly understood that there is a difference between degrees of mobility and degrees of freedom okay many uh, books they try uh, prefer to express everything in terms of degrees of freedom but we can um, we can understand it uh, more specifically the degrees of freedom is number of independent coordinates necessary to describe their robot and degrees of mobility is number of joints, uh, redundant joints which are imparting additional mobility to the robot. So robot is by definition is an open kinematic chain. So it's a mechanical engineering term. So uh, there could be this is a kinematic chain because links are connected by joints okay so this is forward link 
Okay. And uh, it is closed kinematic chain because both this and this end are fixed on the ground. And if somebody uh, rotates this, so this will move. Well, a lot of design uh, details are there. We will not go into detail. This is not a mechanical engineering class. But this is an example, an example of um, closed kinematic chain. And it has wide application uh, in ICG. So this is a object oriented design. You can design many things using forward links. Okay. Uh, including the wiper in your car, etc. etc. But this is an example of closed kinematic chain because both ends are grounded. The moment I am freeing it from the constraint, okay, and say now the structure is like that, this is called a open kinematic chain. One end is open, unconstrained, and then this kind of structure uh, imparts additional complexity in analysis. So all these things we will study. Uh, first of all, I am just trying to give you a notion what robot is and then why uh, the programmable universal machine is necessary. Because in today's scenario, uh, with the advancements of sensing technology, control and uh, powerful computation, machine can really be made intelligent and as well as they can do versatile types of jobs. Okay. Uh, so in the industry especially, we'll talk about that in flexible manufacturing system, uh, robot is an integral part. Okay. And uh, some of the robots which uh, we have here, you can see manipulating type of robot. We have uh, mobile type of robot. We have a walking type of robot, all kinds of robots are there in the laboratory which uh, slowly you will be introduced with. So basically the course will be um, discussing uh, manipulating type of robot because they have uh, um, a lot of uh, complexities and mathematics involved in modeling it. And why modeling is required? Modeling is required because we want it should be controlled by programming. So for that, computer to understand a robot, it needs a mathematical model. And how to create mathematical models, slowly, slowly we will study in this course, in the mathematical form of robotics. And since uh, today, uh, robot has a lot of application in industry, in critical environment, for example, in um, material handling, in a hazardous uh, environment, or uh, maybe in some industry, uh, chip manufacturing industry where uh, people cannot enter uh, because the precision of the manufacturing demands uh, that uh, it should be, not be touched manually. So all these sophisticated tasks can be done uh, by robot uh, and huge application. In space also you have application of robot uh, in um, underwater exploration you have uh, robots. And you know, um, we uh, human race is very interesting. Has very interesting behavior. Whatever technology uh, we scientists develop, first they try to um, desperately implement in uh, war front. So nowadays, uh, robot uh, as a um, as a soldier in the battlefield. Uh, very very soon they they will be uh, that technology will be available. So robot has all kind of applications in industry, in uh, in medical also. Uh, nowadays uh, surgery laparoscope they are a form of robot. Okay, because they can be controlled remotely or they can be programmed to some extent. Hmm. Da Vinci robot, for example, wonderful uh, robot which is being deployed for. Um, medical applications for uh, surgery. So all kind of space, surgery, the medical field uh, that is, and then industry, and then um, underwater exploration, and then as a surveillance device. Okay, so all sort of applications are there. That's why we are interested to learn the internal details of the technology 
which slowly but steadily will do. Thank you for your attention. Stay safe and have a nice day.